Wall Street has never been short of the next big thing in investment trends or inventions during the past three decades that have the potential to alter the course of growth for both the U.S. and global economies. Up until the artificial intelligence AI, revolution, nothing seemed to have the same potentially transformative development potential as the Internet. Artificial intelligence, in its most basic form, is the use of computers and software to do jobs that are typically managed by humans. Artificial intelligence AI, has potential applications in practically every field in business since it allows software and systems to learn and adapt over time, also known as machine learning capabilities, without the need for human interaction. That's why POC researchers predict that by 2030, AI will boost the world economy by $15.7 trillion. The best minds on Wall Street pay note when figures like this are thrown about. However, while billionaires have been quick to cash in on the popularity of AI by investing in fast-growing companies, they have also not been afraid to reduce their holdings in what I have come to call the infrastructure backbone of the AI movement. The most immediate benefit of AI is being shown the door by billionaire investors. When it comes to direct benefits from artificial intelligence, no firm has benefited more than semiconductor stock NVIDIA, NASDAQ, and VDA. The A100 and H100 graphics processing units are the brains behind AI-accelerated data centers, enabling AI-driven software and systems to make split-second decisions. According to some estimations, NVIDIA owns 90% or more of the AI GPUs that are installed in enterprise data centers with heavy compute loads. Eight well-known billionaire investors decreased their funds holdings in NVIDIA during the quarter that ended in December despite the company's supremacy. According to Form 13F filings submitted to the Securities and Exchange Commission, the total number of shares sold by these eight billionaires is indicated in parentheses. Millennium Management's Israel Englander, 1,689,322 shares. Susquehanna International's Jeff Yass, 1,170,611 shares. Point 72 Asset Management's Stephen Cohen, 1,088,821 shares. Appaloosa Management's David Tepper, 235,000 shares. Cochu Management's Philip Lafont, 218,839 shares. Tiger Global Management's Chase Coleman, 142,900 shares. Two Sigma Investments, 30,663 shares. A flurry of challenges provides additional background, but the decision to trim NVIDIA by more than half a dozen billionaires may have been motivated in part by profit-taking in the best-performing megacap firm of 2023. NVIDIA's data center segment saw a 217% increase in sales in its fiscal year 2024, which concluded on January 28. Higher prices for its A100 and H100 GPUs were primarily responsible for this gain, as shown by a much lower 43% increase in cost of revenue across all operational segments from the prior year. The latter part of this year could see a decrease in the discussion surrounding GPU shortage due to the entry of new competitors and NVIDIA's increased manufacturing of its own chips. NVIDIA's gross margin will decrease along with its pricing power. Furthermore, the four biggest clients of NVIDIA, who together make up about 40% of its overall revenue, are creating GPUs specifically targeted at AI. These chips are being utilized to supplement NVIDIA's GPUs, but they also probably indicate the top of these four magnificent seven customers' orders. Billionaires may also be annoyed with the lack of support NVIDIA is receiving from U.S. authorities. NVIDIA created the A800 and H800i GPUs exclusively for the Chinese market following the first round of export restrictions. Regulators in the United States, regrettably, slammed NVIDIA with fresh export restrictions last year that also apply to the A800 and H800. Finally, the past has not been kind to emerging trends in investing. Every must-follow trend since the Internet's inception has gone through an initial bubble. History indicates that AI won't be an anomaly. Top-tier billionaires were keen buyers of two hypergrowth businesses with ties to artificial intelligence, AI, while they were occupied in the fourth quarter dumping NVIDIA shares. Palantir Technologies, 
NYSE. PLTR, a data mining giant, is the first of those two. Four wealthy billionaires bought shares, as reported by 13S. The total number of shares bought is indicated in parentheses. Millennium Management's Israel Englander, 10,669,404 shares. Co2 Management's Philip Laffant, 2,553,432 shares. Susquehanna International's Jeff Yass, 1,279,138 shares. Citadel Advisors Ken Griffin, 1,028,089 shares. You'll see that in the quarter that concluded in December, some of the largest purchasers of Palantir shares were also among the top three NVIDIA sellers, Englander, Lafont, and Yass. The main justification for purchasing Palantir stock is its uniqueness on a large scale. Among other things, Palantir's AI-powered Gotham platform helps federal governments with mission planning and data collection. Concurrently, Foundry is a platform that companies utilize to help them understand their data and optimize their processes. Palantir provides enterprises and federal governments with a spectrum of services that cannot be replaced. Palantir has relied on Gotham as its main source of growth for many years. Palantir typically receives government contracts that are stretched out over a period of four or five years, resulting in extremely predictable operating cash flow. Gotham's long-term potential is, nevertheless, relatively constrained. Palantir's management team forbids the use of their AI-driven platform by a number of countries globally. For this reason, the company's growing foundry platform is crucial to its future development. With a 36% increase in commercial sales in the United States last year, commercial revenue increased by 20% to $1 billion. More significantly, there were 375 commercial customers, up 44%. Even though Palantir's 44% increase is noteworthy, the company still has just 375 commercial clients, indicating that it is still early in its enterprise-focused expansion phase. Palantir shares have moved more than 5% 39 times in the past year, indicating how volatile they are. Given that, today's action suggests that the market views this news as significant, but not enough to drastically alter its assessment of the company. The last significant movement we covered occurred 26 days ago, when the business saw a 5.8% decline on the announcement that a Munis analyst had downgraded the stock from neutral to sell and had set a $20 price target, citing the company's rich valuation. The price objective represented a possible 13% decline from the share price at the time the downgrading was revealed. Although Palantir has increased by 30.7% since the start of the year, its share price of $21.68 is still 18.1% behind its 52-week high of $26.46 set in March 2024. At the IPO in September 2020, investors who purchased $1,000 worth of Palantir shares would now be looking at an investment worth $2,282. If you haven't been living under a rock, you should already be aware of the significant influence that generative AI will have on the way big businesses conduct business. Even if NVIDIA and AMD are at all-time highs, we would rather invest in a lesser-known but profitable semiconductor company that is gaining ground on artificial intelligence. It's clear that billionaires are drawn to Palantir's foundry section because to its promising long-term outlook. Salesforce, a cloud-based provider of customer relationship management CRM, software, is the other high-octane growth company with artificial intelligence ties that billionaires were purchasing during the December-ended quarter. NYSE CRM. Six illustrious billionaires bought Salesforce stock, with the total number of shares acquired indicated in parentheses. Coachu Management's Philip Laffont, 2,144,062 shares. Fisher Asset Management's Ken Fisher, 736,986 shares. Millennium Management's Israel Englander, 533,187 shares. Citadel Advisors Ken Griffin, 198,007 shares. And Susquehanna International's Jeff Yass, 97,603 shares. Renaissance Technologies Jim Simons, 
89,045 shares. Laffant, Englander, and Yass were buyers of Salesforce stock and sellers of NVIDIA shares, similar to Palantir. The industry leader in cloud-based CRM solutions is Salesforce. For those who don't know, CRM software assists companies that deal with customers with a variety of duties, from basic data entry to running intricate models to identify which clients are most likely to buy a new good or service. Customer support agents are free to solve more complicated problems since artificial intelligence, AI, is used to undertake repetitive activities like data entry. As of the first half of 2023, Salesforce's CRM and apps have held the top spot in the global market share rankings for 10 years running, according to IDC. Its four nearest rivals don't even come close to matching its market share for global CRM systems. Given its dominant position in the CRM leaderboard, double-digit annual sales growth is anticipated. The company has also benefited from management's consistent profit-boosting bolt-on acquisitions. Lead by CEO and co-founder Mark Benioff, Salesforce has successfully acquired several companies, including Slack Technologies and Tableau Software. Salesforce will have greater options for cross-selling as a result of these agreements, which will broaden its service ecosystem. In the event that the AI bubble burst, Salesforce's massive CRM moat would shield it from the downturn. These two companies, Palantir and Salesforce, are capturing the attention of billionaire investors for their immense potential in the AI sector. In this video, we've delved into why these stocks are gaining traction and what makes them attractive investments. Stay ahead of the curve by considering these cutting-edge companies for your portfolio. For more insightful tutorials on investing strategies and market trends, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, Investing Tutorial. Together, let's go off on this path to financial prosperity.